Well, you know, we got a fair hearing. Uh, it's been a long day. It's, uh, it's a new principle of law. Just need time to explore it. Um, and we're positive. Why is it important for you to get Mr. Cotter into the provincial system? That's correct. Because, <laughs> because Mr. Cotter has been locked away since the day he got back from Guantanamo. He got back to Canada from Guantanamo. When he went to Millhaven, he spent almost most of his time in solitary confinement. He's not allowed to see the press. He's not allowed to let the world see who he is. Uh, that's important because it helps us to fight the rhetoric of our government. What is really important for the Canadian public today, notwithstanding the fact that Omar Khadr obviously prevented no security risks coming here, is that our government made comments in the paper yesterday. And today. And on today. Canadians should be concerned with the interference by our government in the judicial system without waiting for the facts to come out. This is not about guilt or innocence. This is just about where he gets placed. He goes to provincial at um, a provincial institution, then his chance of, is, of, of parole is greater and quicker. If he remains in Edmonton Max or a federal penitentiary, but he doesn't get any programs, but he spends most of his life walked away, but he has been, his life has been threatened in Mill Haven, he will never get out. You need to do programs, you need to be able to satisfy the correctional plan before he can come up for parole. Federal prisons are supposed to have more programs than provincial Most. jails. They're supposed to. Omar Khadr hasn't done any provincial, any federal programs since the day he stepped on this land. Why is that? I can't speak for the, for the, for the government. Or, all I can say to you is that's the reality. But whose choice? Is it his choice? Or like he, he wants to, but they're not letting of him? Of course he wants to. In fact, we, we try to get him, um, and we do successfully, are able to get our own people to educate him. And he's, um, he's someone who has wanted to be part of the Canadian fabric. He's someone who has um, always longed for education. And we try to teach him in Guantanamo as we're trying to do it here. How clear is the legal argument, do you think, in, in what you're bringing forward? Do you think it's a pretty clear-cut thing or open for a lot of interpretation, do you think? Well, you know, we're biased. Um, we think it's a simple argument. It's a national transfer of, of Offenders Act, but it deals with placement. It requires a determination to be made whether the sentence he received in Guantanamo, if occurred here in Canada, could it be treated as a, as a youth sentence? And we say yes. Um, you don't get eight years for, for attempted murder in Canada. You don't get eight years for murder in Canada. It, uh, but he got eight years for five sentences of which included murder, which included material support of terrorism, which included spying, which included attempted murder. He got eight years. And so it's a matter of statutory interpretation, and we'll leave it up to the judge to make that determination.